Talk about ethers. Uh, just a side point, ethers can be formed from alcohols. We'll go over the reaction. There's a lot of properties in ethers and alcohols that are the same, but there's some significant differences. So I'm going to go through the textbook, essentially, on this one. Um, first of all, an ether is two R groups on an oxygen. This is not an ether because of the carbonyl. This is an ester. Okay. That's one of the common things that people mistake. So be wary if I ask you which name the functional groups. Don't name this as a carbonyl and a ether. It's just an ester. Okay. I probably won't ask you to name functional groups anymore, but sorry. I know it's so easy, huh? <laughs> right, there's a bunch of ethers that are important. I'm just leaving the slide in. Okay. <laughs> Name sorry. Naming of ethers. Naming of ethers is pretty straightforward. Uh, you name it just like an alkane, okay, or whatever the parent uh, is telling you to name it as. And then ethers are considered substituents um, to the alkane. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a second. Common names are even easier. In a common name, you just name the thing on the left and you name the thing on the right. Okay. So this is ethyl methyl ether. This is tert butyl methyl ether. And again, just put them in alphabet alphabetical order. This is the common nomenclature. Um, I don't usually teach common nomenclature and really require you to know that much, except for things like this that are really common. Right? Most people don't name ethers, small ethers, systematically. They just say, well, it's ethyl methyl ether or T butyl methyl ether or diethyl ether. What's diethyl ether? Two ethyl groups, right? It's the Batman molecule. Sorry. Now, that would be diethyl ether. Okay. Um, now, the systematic is simply to name uh, the parent as you would normally, and then the ether is known as an alkoxy substituent. So this is the alkyl group. This is the oxygen. So the, because it's connected by an oxygen, it's an alkoxy group. So... This is an ethoxy, all right? This would be methoxy, all right? So it's pretty straightforward. We'll do some examples. We're going to name this one. And remember, the ether isn't part of the parent chain. It is attached to the parent chain. Right? So for that top structure, what's the parent? So for this guy, what's the parent for this? Oh, lost my connection again. Yeah, everything to the right of the oxygen would be the parent. This is a substituent off of the parent chain. So we could number this a couple of different ways. See if it'll let me do it, because it's much easier to number it up there. Uh, we could go one, two, three, four, or we could go one, two, three, four. Now, since the uh, ethoxy group, right, that's what this is. on the number one carbon, and this would be on the number two carbon, right? You're going to pick that as one. It would be one, two, three, four. This is ethoxy. This is going to be, so that's one ethoxy. This is going to be three fluoro. This is going to be two methyl.
part of parachain, yeah. What is it? So this is going to be one, two, three, four. So it's butene. So this is the parent is two butene. So now all I have to do is put these in alphabetical order. So uh, chloro, ethyl, and methyl. So this is going to be three chloro. One ethyl two. Oh, sorry. I left my ethoxy. Ethoxy. Oh, so, oh sorry. Yeah, ethoxy. Yeah. And two methyl. And then two butene. And then the last thing you do. And again, remember this kind of name can also be butene, to ene, but if you only have one, don't do that because it just sounds ridiculous. Um, well, sorry, I shouldn't say that. But that's, what's the one thing that's missing? What's that? Easy. Easy, yeah, the Sarah chemistry. So then you have to look at the double bond, and then the chlorine is one here, and then over here because of the oxygen, right? You, and uh, attached to this carbon, because this is a tied carbon, but this is a carbon, the next thing's a hydrogen, here's the next thing's the oxygen. So because of the oxygen, the one is on this side. So the high priority groups are on opposite sides of the pi bond, right? So they're E. Yeah, so um, there's only one. if there's only one, you usually don't put it. If you have multiple like double bonds or multiple stereocenters to distinguish, then you usually put the numbers. So this becomes E. And that's it. Okay. So we are putting the double bond carbon that's next to the next to the oxygen? Yeah, simply because uh, if I started here, this would be two chloro. Here, I'm starting one that ethoxy, and the first substituent is the lowest number. It's that, like, if I were to do like this, and I put a, like a CL here and a CL here, you'd number from this end, right? If I did a CL here, you'd have to number from this end. Now it's two. Because it would be on the number one carbon. It's alphabetical still. Yeah. So it's like if, if they're, they're, they're ranked the same priority as the halogens and the, and the other like alkyl, the non important functional groups. It's not really not important. They don't have a prioritization that's higher. Okay. Okay, this has become a glorified slide flipper. Um, Properties. <laughs> well, I can't write on it. It's just making it pissing me off. <laughs> Although I can watch movies on this one. Over here, if I were to watch a movie, I'd draw the pictures. It's really boring. <laughs> Nobody can tell what's going on. Okay, so uh, about the structure, right? I'm just going to go over this really quickly. Water, 104.5, all right? Uh, in methanol, it's 109, and in dimethyl ether, or ethers in general, it's more like 112. Why is it bigger? Why is the angle bigger when you have ethers? Yeah, the methyl groups are bigger. And actually, uh, I didn't say this in 1A, but the size of the groups that are attached is a better predictor of what the bond angle will be. Okay, so... So yeah, these are big groups, so the bond angle increases, right? Difference between alcohol and water versus the ether, intermolecular forces. What do we say? Water and methanol have, what? Are, what's the primary intermolecular forces in water and methanol? Hydrogen bonding, yeah? Polar and hydrogen bonding. In dimethyl ether, it's polar, but it's not hydrogen bonding. And so, as a result, you expect the intermolecular forces for alcohols and water to be much higher. Dimethyl ether can still be hydrogen bonded to by the solvent. 
So ethers are a little bit soluble in water, but not very soluble because they can't hydrogen bond back. So like diethyl ether, for example, and water are not miscible with each other. Okay, in terms of physical properties, right? Water and methanol have much higher boiling points than ethers do. This is a little hydrogen bonding blurb, right? So if you just look at some of the properties, ethanol, boiling point 78, uh, you know, water is 100. Dimethyl ether is minus 25 uh, degrees Celsius. Actually, is that boiling point? Yeah, dimethyl ether. Yeah. Diethyl ether, we use a lot as a solvent in organic chemistry. It's 35 degrees Celsius. So what's your body temperature? 37. 37, yeah. So in principle, if you took <laughs> that ether and held it in your hand, you could get it to boil. Well, unless... Try it. Um... We'll put some in a flask, and you can hold it for a long time. And it will, it, in theory, if it gets hot enough, if you're... How long time? Well, you got to heat it up. Your body doesn't generate that much heat. Like an hour? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> you rub your hands together, make it extra hot. Okay, but what we like to use ethers as solvents in organic chemistry, especially for things like Grignard reactions or for things that are involving really strong bases. Okay. Why do we like to use it as a solvent for Grignard? It evaporates fast. It's one and the other. But the principle, like the main reason is it's aprotic. It doesn't have hydrogen on it to give up. Alcohols and water can't be used in Grignard, but ethers are used all the time for Grignard reactions. And then when you're done, yeah, the workup of the reaction is really nice when you have an ether because you basically blow warm air over it and it's gone. Or you put it in a vacuum and it boils away. Okay. Why do the boil? Why does the boiling point trend go from on the ethers go from minus twenty five to thirty five to ninety one? Size. Set size. Yeah. Molecular weight and the length of the molecule is important. Oh yeah. So this little thing. Right, so. These are the things we talked about. Ethers are often used by organic chemists as solvents. They've got low boiling points. They're not protic. And the other thing, actually, is uh, nucleophiles have a negative charge to them and, and positive charge cations. Uh, the ether has enough polarity to stabilize some of that, get it? So you can get stuff in the solution. Okay. That's the principal reason. Now, for Grignard reactions, it's actually really nice because the oxygens help to stabilize the positive charge on the magnesium in the Grignard reaction to make it a little bit more reactive and make it soluble in solution. Okay, I'll stop. I'm out of time. And then we'll do, start with crown ethers next time. And your questions. <laughs>